let's understand why validating machine learning models is necessary and the principle behind how to actually validate your machine learning models. Now, once you train your machine learning models, your models will be capable of making predictions. Now, before someone uses those predictions, there needs to be established a certain level of confidence behind how accurate those predictions are. To establish that confidence, you need to definitely validate your machine learning models. Now, how are you going to do it? That is, we want to be fairly confident that the model is going to perform equally well outside the lab. When I say outside the lab, at the time of training, it is going to give you a certain level of accuracy. When you put it into real world situation with real data, live data perhaps, it needs to perform at the same level of, at least the same level of accuracy. Now to do this, what we are going to do is, your model is going to get trained on a certain training data set. We have seen that you have a data, you have a machine learning algorithm. This trains on your data, and this is going to give you the ML model. Now, during the training process, what we are going to do is, let's assume this represents your training data. Now, this training data, we are going to split into a training set, or rather, I shouldn't call this a training data. This is just your base data set. This base data set, we are going to split it into training set and testing set. This could typically be in a proportion of 75% and 25%, or it could be like, 80% and 20% or else sometimes people also take just 10% of data into test and remaining 90% into training. Typically, these are the proportions. It will be okay if you keep just 10% as long as you have a sufficient representation of all the different test cases in this 10%. There is sufficient data points to test various different scenarios. Now, we split this data set into train and test then we build the model on this training set on this particular set the machine learning algorithm sees only this part now on seeing this the ml model will be built on building this ml model we are going to pass in the test as an input to this ml model pass the test as an input to ml model and this is going to give you the predictions we generally call the predictions as y hat in the test data, we also know the original, the actual values of what we are predicting. In the test data, the test data is composed of X variables, that is the predictors, and Y variable, which is the variable that we want to predict. In housing prices problem, the price of the house is going to be your Y. All the remaining variables or remaining data that is going to help you to predict Y is called X, the input data. So this input data, this X, we are passing to the ML model. This is going to give you back a prediction Y hat. Now you have an actual Y that is present in your data. You also have a Y hat prediction coming from the model, right? Now you will be able to compare how close your Y hat is with your Y. The closer it is with Y, the better is your model. Now let's suppose the model, the Y and Y hat are close enough that the accuracy turns out to be close to say 90% on test data. Now what we can also do is, in your training, your, your ML model is now created. On your training data, this also has a Y and an X. The training data also has a Y and an X. You pass in this particular input into your model. Your model has already seen this data. This particular data set, your model has already seen. Pass in this part of your data as an input to the ML model. This is going to give you another set of predictions. Let me call it as y hat train. Yes, we have y hat train. We have y train also here. This is your y train. Now compare y train, how close your y hat train is to y train. If your model has learned fairly well, it will imply that the accuracy or the closeness of y train and y hat train, the accuracy will be very similar to what you saw in the test data, approximately close to 90%. It typically might be slightly higher than 90%, say 91% or 92%, something like that. That's also okay, right? Somewhere, both of these accuracies, both of these error rates or the accuracies, both of them should be very close to each other. The error rate that you see in the training data and the error rate that you see in the test data should be close to each other. Why this should be close? This is to ensure that your model is going to be equally predicting well on a data that it has not seen. So on the data that it has seen, say it is predicting 90% accuracy. 
on a data it has not seen, it is also predicting 90% accuracy, then I'm fairly confident. But if this one deteriorates, if your test data prediction deteriorates, it means there is a good chance that the model's performance is going to deteriorate further on seeing new additional data that we don't even have. In real time, you might be receiving new additional data apart from the data that you, that you already have, right? On new data, this might go even worse, even worse than what you see in the test data. Now, this whole process of validating your machine learning model is what is called as cross-validation. This is the standard method. This is the basic bare minimum method that must be done before you put any machine learning model into use. Now, there is another aspect to this. Let me clear this out. Sometimes you might also see people splitting your data into train, test, and validation samples. And this could be in the proportion of, say, this is 60%. This might be 20%. This also might be 20%. Or it could be 80% train, 10% validation, and 10% test. In the next one, we will understand the purpose of this validation sample.